Welcome everyone to another video. I wanted to do a deep dive into a part of Fallout that we only really catch fleeting glimpses of, the pre-war world. Understanding the pre-war time period is important because it deepens our understanding of the Fallout wasteland. Much of the aesthetic, philosophies, and civilizations often have their genesis in or flavor of the pre-war world. So let's take a look at the historical events, the culture, and what the average life of citizens in the pre-war was. First off, I think it is important to point out at the beginning here that much like everything else with Fallout, most things have a basis in our world. It could be said that Fallout, in many ways, is a caricature of our world. Events, philosophies, and the like all have a basis in what is familiar to us, and then are often taken to the extreme. This is often a form of exploratory analysis or critique, and a great example of this is the Bioshock series as it explores themes of objectivism, classes, and authority. So it will become pretty obvious that much of what we will explore in this video has a fascinating basis in our reality. I want to cover some of the post-World War II history and then the big historical events leading up to the Great War in 2077. The main geopolitical opponent coming out of World War II was the USSR, much as with our own timeline and an arms race and cold war arose from this situation. With some minor differences, the tense relationship between the countries that then weaponized their political ideologies against each other was much the same as in our own world. An important difference, however, seems to be that the USSR did not dissolve after 1989 like it did in our world. Rather than the USSR collapsing, it seemed to either enter a decline or just be eclipsed completely by the rising Chinese nation. By the 21st century, China was recognized as the principal enemy of the United States. And although the USSR was not the main threat, it was still considered an enemy of the United States. By the time of the Great War, relations had improved considerably from their Cold War lows, with immigrants being accepted into the US, and even a Soviet citizen being admitted into Vault 13. The USSR must have weakened considerably allowing for China to assert itself as the main geopolitical rival to the US, which is also indicated by the dearth of information we have in-game regarding the USSR. As China replaced the USSR as the boogeyman to the West, it led to much of the same things that the rivalry between the US and the Soviet Union included. Massive military spending, propaganda, espionage, and projection of soft power. Despite all this, the US and China seem to have an economic relationship, although it is not possible to determine if it was anything like the massive trade relationship that exists in our world. What is known, however, is that it was essentially a continuation of the Cold War, just with a new player in the game. This would start to change as the world's dependence on oil was stressed to the breaking point. The resource wars, as I'm sure many of us know, and the rest could intuit, were a series of wars waged from 2052 into the 2070s over primarily oil and uranium. According to the Fallout Bible, one of the first important events was a US invasion of Mexico. Although it was under the guise of national security due to the rampant corruption and major issues with pollution, the US was quick to secure the oil refineries and make sure that resources could be quickly and safely brought into the US. Not much else is known about this event and the eventual outcome, and we should always remember that the Fallout Bible is not implicitly canon. Europe, or what is known as the European Commonwealth in the Fallout universe, began to feel the shortages of oil rather sharply as their dependence on oil from the Middle East led to heightened tensions. Oil prices continued to rise, though with no diplomatic means to solve the situation, it eventually led to a war. There were some key events that took place during this conflict, namely the nuclear bombing of Tel Aviv in 2053, and a limited nuclear exchange that led to fears of a nuclear holocaust in 2054. There is not much more information given on these events, other than it directly led to the U.S. moving forward with Project Safe House, which was the government-led effort to create vaults for the express purpose of having shelter in the event of a nuclear war. 
United Nations were completely incapable of preventing or containing the wars and violence, and due to major disagreements between most parties within the organization, it was disbanded. By 2060, the oil fields of the Middle East were no longer capable of producing more oil, and since that was the whole point of the conflict in the first place, the war fragmented into smaller armed conflicts amongst European nations as they vied for resources amongst each other. The U.S. also felt the strain of resources, but had natural reserves that were still producing. It was also grappling with a nationwide epidemic due to the breakout of the new plague in 2053. China, on the other hand, was at significant risk due to resource shortages. Most of the world at this point could not afford to waste oil on personal matters. Therefore, gas-powered automobiles quickly became useless as people sought for al alternatives. In 2065, trade agreements between the U.S. and China broke down as the United States loudly stated that the last remaining oil reserves were not going to be traded to anyone, while also revealing the world's first fusion technology that same year. China felt that there was no other option than to orchestrate an invasion of Alaska in order to seize natural resources from the United States in 2066. The American Sino War, as it would eventually be called, ground down into a stalemate with neither side capable of making significant progress. Even with a technological edge in fusion tech and newly introduced power armor, the US struggled to make progress. This led to the annexation of Canada in 2069. The U.S. would use the war and Canada's reluctance to authorize massive amounts of U.S. military and supplies through Canada to Alaska as a pretext to annex the country. The U.S. immediately set about quelling Canadian resistance and protests, all the while pillaging the country's natural resources. As the war raged, the U.S. instigated the Panverian Immunity Project, with the stated goal to help find a cure for the new plague that had caused quarantines and resulted in thousands of people dying since 2053. This research would lead to the development of FEV, which was intended to be used to create super soldiers. The US also sought to break the stalemate in Alaska, and in 2074 opened a new front on the Chinese mainland. The fight continued to be difficult, with little progress from either side, until 2076 when the T-51B power armor was introduced in large numbers. It solved many issues with previous armors and provided the necessary momentum to make American forces successful in taking ground from China and Alaska and pushing farther into mainland China. Not everything was sunshine and rainbows, however, as that same year many cities across the United States saw massive protests due to food and energy shortages. This led to martial law being declared, and U.S. troops being stationed within the U.S. to enforce the mandate. January 10, 2077, the U.S. officially declared victory in Alaska, and prepared to turn their full force toward mainland China in order to bring an end to our cornered and desperate foe. October 22, 2077 would be the last normal day of the pre-war era, as the very next day missiles flew and forever changed history. With that historical context, let's look at how that affected pre-war life, culture, and beliefs. It takes no explaining to know that China was a very pervasive topic as people feared the potential of conflict, worked to thwart Chinese espionage efforts, and the government itself blasted anti-China propaganda at every opportunity. This led to what was called the Third Red Scare, the first having taken place after World War I, and the second after World War II. These Red Scares happened in our timeline, and presumably also in the Fallout timeline. The first and second scares had similarities, namely in that they were pushed by fears of communist infiltration into places where critical information and positions of influence were at risk, and they centered around a concept of Americanism. This Americanism being at odds with and directly threatened by communist ideology and what were called un-American traits. This led to heavy propaganda 
general mistrust and a curtailing of rights for the sake of security for the American people. This is easily reflected in the pre-war world, where propaganda is still littered about the country centuries after the Great War. Posters, billboards, media, and even the new plague were all heavily propagandized. If you all remember, a stated symptom of the new plague was having communistic thoughts. Probably my favorite example of this was in New Vegas in Old World Blues, where you can go into a school and see several posters. On these posters are written, A is for America, B is for bomb, C is for commie, D is for dirty commie. So we know pre-war society, particularly leading up to the Great War, was heavily propagandized and paranoid. There is a reason for much of this, seeing as starting in 2066, the US had been at war with China. However, we also know of abuses that occurred because of this. Neighbors spying on each other and making false accusations, as well as Chinese internment camps, which were inspired by the World War II Japanese internment camps. We also know that the years leading up to the Great War were fraught with fear and death regarding the new plague, which was quite dangerous and really never given serious consideration by the U.S. Riots within the U.S. as a result of food and resource shortages also paint an extremely bleak picture of pre-war USA, as people have to be suffering substantially for multiple riots and protests to break out across the nation. The government power crept deeper and deeper into everyone's lives as they used international events as excuses to infringe on people's rights and eventually outright martial law as things became exceptionally dire. So, with all that heavy stuff in mind, how can we rationalize this with the happy-go-lucky perception of the pre-war era that is presented to us either through remnants of the past or directly as in the intro to Fallout 4? Is it possible that the quintessential American lifestyle of opportunity and security could also be manifest at a time when the nation at large and the world itself was struggling with so many things? My answer would be yes, it is possible, and I'll explain why and what the implications are. Using Fallout 4 as the primary example, we know that Nate was a veteran in the army and Nora was a lawyer. A household with a double income and one very new child could probably afford a pretty nice place to live. I think that these communities of more well-off folks were perhaps insulated to a greater degree from much of the suffering that was happening across the US. I also think that the brief glimpses we get into the pre-war when roaming about the wasteland that show an incredibly prosperous and happy nation is also as a result of massive propaganda that the U.S. had created to sway public opinion. The propaganda would not just be for citizens of the U.S., but for the world in general, as the U.S. was active in exporting its culture and an image of prosperity and strength to geopolitical rivals during the Cold War. If these thoughts are correct, it would be another way that the Fallout series has shown that it can explore social ideas and critiques of things such as class and class struggles. So what about some of the cultural aspects of the pre-war world? I researched topics related to things like people's attitude towards racism, homophobia, sexism, etc. and did not come up with much. It seems to be something that isn't touched on, with one major exception being rampant racism towards Chinese. This could indicate that society in general had reached a point where those issues were no longer pressing, or perhaps the creators just decided to exclude it. Now speaking of culture, I think it would be a mistake to not give some thought as to why the pre-war world seemed to be a continuation of the culture of the 1950s. There is little to no information for why this could be the case, other than the creators wanted a specific aesthetic, backdrop, or tone for the series. It raises some interesting questions, though. 
Did the Fallout universe culture progress as our own world did, with the decades leading up to the Great War resulting in some sort of 1950s revival? Or did the 1950s culture just persist with no real change? The revival theory, to me, seems more plausible, since the same clothing style can't stay in vogue for more than a few years because, you know, people are people. However, we don't see any evidence for people and places having been transformed through different periods of pop culture and fashion. For example, we are far removed from the 1970s, but you still find some people, cars, buildings, etc., that reflect that time period and the fashion, thoughts, or design philosophies that were popular during that time. It is evident that at one point in time, that was the dominating culture. Since we don't have any official lore or statements from the creators regarding this, I'm going to submit my headcanon, which is as follows. And remember, I have nothing really to substantiate this, but it seems to make the most sense given what we know about the Fallout universe. I think that society progressed through time with different cultural norms and prevailing fashions. But in the decades leading up to the Great War, the government pushed for a return to 50s era culture. Perhaps they saw this as the most patriotic period of American history, and therefore sought to revert customs, cultural norms, and fashion back to that in order to inspire the same kind of patriotism and unique American spirit at a time when it was sorely needed. This would not count for technology, as that developed completely differently, but seems like something that would happen in the Fallout universe in the years leading up to the Great War. So that brings me to the end of my video. I'd really like to know what your thoughts are. Do you have your own headcanon for why some things are portrayed the way they are? Why do you think the 1950s aesthetic was in full effect in 2077? Leave a comment and let me know because I'm actually really interested to hear what you all think. I wish you all the best and hope to see you in another video.